This is Chris von Hoffman. I'm writer director of Drifter, Monster Party, and a Phoebophobia segment from Phobias. And you're listening to the Horror Squad podcast. Welcome back to episode 209, Horror Squad Podcast here. And this week's episode, we are reviewing Frozen. I'm freezing right now. From 2010, directed by Adam Green. Sam here, Steve here, Joe here, but no Todd here, which is why I'm opening the show. So unfortunately, you guys are going to have to Send Todd some kisses over the internet, over on the Discord, because he's not feeling well right now. So, Todd, we miss you, buddy. Steve, Joe, we definitely do. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna straight up tell you guys, ask you guys this: How cold does it get where you guys are? Because here it is fucking freezing (laughs) these days. Yes, they actually canceled school tomorrow because it's gonna be so Mm -hmm. cold. Yeah, Yeah, here. yeah, but I mean, this I feel like this is like normal for Canada, but we don't get the the Arctic blasts, is what they're calling it. Uh, so tomorrow it's supposed to be like negative like twenty with the wind chill, but I feel like that's like every day in Canada. <laughs> and negative twenty with with the wind chill is pretty normal yeah. for our winter. Uh, right. For us, tomorrow is going to be negative forty with the wind wow. chill. Which <laughs> negative forty for those who don't know is where Celsius and Fahrenheit meet. So it's negative oh 40 God. for both. <laughs> um, That's insane. It's 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 like freezing your eyeballs as soon as you walk out the door cold. Um, it's wow. yeah, it's it's I'm so happy I'm working from home right now for reasons like that. You know, I don't have to go out, but I definitely remember times where, you know, in college I'd take the bus and 15 minutes into being outside, I, I feel like I'm not gonna make it to, to school. You know, it's just it's crazy. It's 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 nuts. Man, that's insane. Mm-hmm. What's yeah. the coldest it gets in Massachusetts, Joe? I mean, tomorrow will be close to it. I mean, which is why they're like canceling schools. But like, well, so yeah, tomorrow, it's... what do you think like the coldest month is? Coldest like month? I would say it. Yeah, I would say it's probably February. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, on average, we're like in the in the winter between the twenties and thirties, and then eventually you'll get days where it gets into the single digits or the teens but it's very rare we fall we fall below zero yeah yeah we, I, i'd say the same thing here like mid january yeah. to like mid february is really the peak of cold you know it, it although mm-hmm. on the flip side we usually don't get that much snow within this month because it's so cold it's like too cold to get snow so there's at least that it's when it gets a little warmer that the snow comes in so we get like a reprieve for a month of you know de- cold you can i can deal with anyway more so than having to deal with you know feet of snow and the driveway or in the street or whatever so yeah. do you prefer to be cold like canada cold or hot summer <laughs> where it's like so fucking hot uh honestly i'd rather be so fucking hot uh, I know it's crazy really? to say. I know a lot of people would think cold because you can add layers for the cold, whereas mm-hmm. in summer, you know, there's only a limit to how much you can remove. Um, but I guess because I grew up in the cold, it's just like it, to me, it's like a vacation when I think of being so friggin' hot. Uh, uh, but dry hot is one thing. Humid hot, like Florida hot, that's a whole other thing. Like uh, where you're yeah. sweating just being outside for two minutes. That's that's a whole other level of hot in that sense i'd rather be cold (laughs) yeah that's what i was getting to yep same here well and too like i have summer depression and it summer literally makes me want to kill myself like but in winter i just love it so much because it's so like fresh so cold i love the clothes like i just like wearing sweatshirts and layers and all sorts fuck off summer (laughs) yeah Uh, someone put it like one of my coworkers one time put it in a way that I never thought of before. Winter is like almost putting your your country through like the wash. It like washes all the crap from the summer. And then in the spring, you get like kind of a clean city again because all that water and all that cleaning has been like beneficial mm-hmm. to it. So it's, uh, yeah, it's cool, but too cold right now. That's, you know, it's yeah. over my threshold and I don't like it. So uh, how are you guys doing? What did you guys do this week? Anything fun? What did we do this weekend? 
I worked this whole weekend, so we didn't do anything fun. I don't think. Yeah, nothing, no. nothing too exciting. Just, you know, I, I bought my first heart. You know, I've taken like a, I guess a bit of a off time with my collection. Like I, I guess because of the holiday season, I just haven't been buying anything um, for my collection wise. And because I'm running out of room in our apartment. Uh, but I bought a Pennywise reaction figure. Uh, nothing too exciting or anything like that, but. Uh, it just felt good in a way to buy something again. This was after like two days before I said to Sam, you know, maybe I'm going to start selling my collection off. And then two days later, I bought something for it. So I know, I'm <laughs> surprised you said something. I thought I was going to have to put yeah. you on blast. He said no. that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, maybe I should sell it. And I'm like, Joe, you're being ridiculous right now. Like, <laughs> Don't make any crazy decisions at this moment. Yeah. Well, just because I hadn't bought anything in so long. So I was like, I don't know, like maybe like, well, first of all, it's like an expensive hobby, obviously to have like having being a collector, but honestly, I don't spend my money on anything else really. So, um, but like, I don't know, I was just like, it had been like maybe like a month or two since I had bought anything. And I was just like, I don't know, maybe like I'm, I'm getting out of the game here, but I don't know. Then someone said, I, I was reading like online because like I, I'm in a bunch of collector groups and stuff and people posting stuff like that all the time. And they always say the best advice is a lot of people say you'll regret it, but they say if you really are considering it to pack everything away and keep it in storage for like two or three months. And if you don't miss it, then it's it's time to move on from mm -hmm. it. So I don't know. We'll see. But I think I'll I think I was just having a bit of a I don't know thought process about it, but I don't I don't think I could let it go. I really don't. <laughs> Then there'd be more room for my Halloween. Exactly. <laughs> that's that's why Sam was cheering me on. Right? I was not. I told you no. <laughs> you did. You did. I, I think it's a product of space, uh, oftentimes, because when I was at my last house, I felt the same at some point where it's like, okay, I really don't have room for stuff anymore. Maybe I should start selling some stuff off. And then I moved, had a bit, got a bigger house, and all of a sudden it's like the opposite. Like I had the itch for the collection again because i have like spots for stuff now and it's like oh my god i can get this and that so that that could be it too you, you you've been in that space for a while now and you're clearly almost out of room so i think that could be a big thing as well yeah definitely and it's part of the reason why i like keep saying to sam i was like i really want to buy a house i really want to buy a house just so i can get like i really want my own like collection room again because like in my old place i had like a place where i could put my entire collection whereas right now it's just like all like cramped into one spot and it's in the living room and like it's just like not ideal so hopefully uh once we find a, a new place i can get a night like it can be more like spaced out and just kind of because i mean obviously sam hates it but even like i'm not like a big fan of it just being all like crunched together so we'll see hopefully within the next year or two but i don't know the way house the housing market is right now we'll, I don't know, we'll see <laughs> Meanwhile, Joe's talking in front of like his, the half of the living room is horrible. <laughs> right. I'm ceiling to the floor and I don't hate it. It's just sometimes it runs like my cutesy Halloween photos that I want to <laughs> take from my Instagram. I always tell Joe that I'm going to start um, like a horror Instagram account just posting his collection. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, he'd never yeah. post the coolest stuff that he has. Like no one even knows. I'm like, why are, why are you even on Instagram, sir? <laughs> I haven't even been on Instagram. I I barely like ever since like, like uh, honestly, the hundred days of Halloween happy, your photo challenge there is like kind of what kept me like active on mm -hmm. it. But ever since that ended, I think I've posted like twice. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look a Raven looking for me. <laughs> and speaking of uh, Halloween happy, uh, I got to say, Sam, you're, planners are like crazy they're so freaking cool Steve. and you sold out like crazy so are you making more what's the deal with that i am i'm working on my next batch um i don't know like i wanted to do a bunch and i wish that i i wish there was some way that i could do them and that it didn't take me like forever for each one because it's quite the process like i wish i had a machine or something or i don't know but um, yeah, I'm currently working on my second batch. I'm hoping to get them up on my Etsy shop this week. So we'll see. That's really awesome. 
Yeah, they, they, they're they amazing. And if people like, you should post some in the Discord too, Sam. I don't know if any of you posted any in there, but yeah. Posted one. Yeah, there's, don't miss out if the second, I know you're thinking about doing a second batch. So mm -hmm. it'll be exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, real quick, uh, this might not be uh, relevant to everyone that listens to the podcast, but if you don't know, Steve and I met on YouTube through unboxing videos. And I was at work the other day and we have a little downtime before we have to punch out. And like, I literally was so bored that I went back on my YouTube channel and I started watching some of my old unboxing videos just to like, to stroll down memory lane. And, uh, I was like, it like made me miss, uh, uh, subscription boxes a little bit, just like watching them, even though like most of them were so shitty and like, but I was like, I do miss that element of surprise and, um, it, it was so random. Cause then like the very next day I got an advertisement for don't eat the gum, which I don't know if you ever got any of their boxes, uh, Steve, but like, they're like a more, uh, custom done subscription box. So I'm, I was like thinking, I was like, maybe I'm, maybe I'm going to grab like one of their custom subscribe. It's not like one you have to like re up for every month, but you just, I think they have like a hundred dollar box or like a $200 box. Didn't and Eric can, like, do uh, some notepads for them? He may have. I yeah, he, he might did. have. Yeah. I thought Eric S did. Eric S did? Yeah, he probably, I wouldn't doubt like it. He did those cool like notebooks that he does. I thought yeah, it was he, for. He may, maybe, but yeah. So I don't know. I might get one and maybe I'll unbox it on YouTube. Uh, you need to have the I'll same features as you used to. <laughs> it just wouldn't be the yeah. same without the, uh, the old, uh, the old intro. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about it too, because uh, I'm cleaning up my office right now to kind of reorganize everything. And I found a horror block. So the actual uh, yeah. like box for the horror block, I put my like, horror stickers in there and uh, I was like, damn, that's, that brings back memories for sure. Yeah. Right. I'm, I'm wearing a hard block shirt right now. Oh, you actually. are. Yeah. Uh, Beetle, the Beetlejuice hard block shirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, man, the, I just like forgot how many other subscription boxes there were, though, like at its peak. Like there was like a box called A Box. And I was like, what the fuck? It was A Box. Like I watched that. I was like, I don't remember that at all. And then there was, do you remember Bobos? Big old box oh, yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah oh, I, I couldn't that? get it. You but, and Manda uh... loved that one. Yeah. <laughs> I did love that one. I don't know what happened to them. Like I they, forget. Like they, all of these. I, like I, I remember why? they um they took took a bunch of orders and then couldn't fulfill them anymore. Just and like all yeah. of them yeah. just disappeared. Took everyone's oh, money and like. Yeah. Yeah. Oh dang! There was a company yeah. who had emailed me probably like three weeks ago, and they're a newer subscription box company, and like they wanted to send me one if I made a video, but I was like, oh, I'm not going down that road. <laughs> <laughs> Did you unbox? Did you unbox that uh, Halloween box you got yet, Sam? No, and I completely forgot. I don't even know where it's at, honestly. Mm -hmm. I think it might be in yeah. my closet. I forgot about. I thought of it the other day. I was like, "Shit, I forgot about that Halloween promo box." Yeah, I'll have to the do studio it. sent Sam. Yeah, Halloween kills box. So I, I'm excited to see what's in it. <laughs> Me too. Yeah, it's a bunch of stickers that says "Evil Dice Tonight." That's, that's all it is. <laughs> yeah, oh right. My gosh, can you imagine? <laughs> That'd be so funny. Oh my God, you are only... with like imprinted "Evil Dice Tonight." <laughs> I'll keep you guys posted. Thank you. That's good. All right, you guys ready to get in questions? Let's yes. do it. All right, you can send us those questions on social media at the Horror Squad Podcast or on our Discord, where a bunch of really cool horror fans uh, hang out and talk about all sorts of stuff a lot of big discussions this week including the uh, finale of dexter which was a very good discussion for those who uh, participated and i will talk a little bit more about my spoiler free thoughts in the what watch segment but first let's get into some audio questions first one of course from our man chuck chuck what is your first question Hey squad, Captain Amazing 85, aka Chuck, with a few questions. If you could learn the answer to one question about your future, what would the question be? So that's his question, but I, I want to, I want two answers to this. I want like a serious answer, but also a, if you could look into the future of horror, what's one horror question you would have about something that's coming out in the future that we don't know about yet? Mm -mm. For horror, hmm. Oof. I, I guess God. I don't know. Like everyone always says, like they don't want to know when they die. But I think I would want to know, like how 
maybe not like the exact date of when I'm going to die, but maybe how I'm going to die. Like that way, like, I don't know if that would fuck with you or not, but I don't know. I would want personally, I'd want to know, even if it is the exact date that way, like I can just like prepare for it and like live my life knowing like, okay, this is the day I'm going to go. And yeah, let me think about the horror one. Um, so I feel like knowing when you're going to die and how you're going to die. I don't know. I already over worry and I have like, um, a way of thinking where I'm like always in a catastrophe naturally, which is like not good for my brain. So I don't know if I would want to know the exact day or the exact way, maybe like the year or like the age that I'm going to be, but I don't want to know like what part of the year or how, because say if it's a like a car wreck every time I get in the car I'm gonna be like this is it this is it this is it um so yeah I'd be fine with like knowing when I'm gonna die just not the exact date I guess because I think it would make you you know live your life differently um horror wise I'm gonna have to think of that one too um serious wise I mean yeah it's it's a tough question right because if you ask I want to know how I'm going to die. Like Joe said, like you said, Sam, if it says car accident, you're going to be worried every time you get in the car. Every uh, time. Even though it could be when you're 105, you know, <laughs> because you don't know. You just know the method and that would mess you up. Uh, if you know when, I don't know, having a countdown to your death is kind of gruesome. Uh, but then again, you wouldn't be as worried about everything. Like, you know, you have a growth on you and you're like, yeah. I'm not supposed to die for another 20 years. I'll be fine. You know, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's like weird. Um, uh, for me, I'd want to know. I wouldn't want a date. I wouldn't want a method. But I'd like to know, am I going to see my retirement? Like just, am I going to get to enjoy my life free of the shackles that is my job? Uh, that would be, yeah. you know, that's all I need to know. Because if it's no, I'll rethink my, <laughs> you know, like how much mind space I give my work right now. Whereas if I do, then at least I know that I'm working towards having at least a few years of enjoying my life at my own pace. Yeah, I was thinking maybe like knowing like, am I going to live past retirement or do I like just so I need to like, do I need to be saving money? Or can I just like, just do whatever? And then I'm not gonna have to worry about because I'll be dead by then. So does it have to be a yes or no question? Because I would also ask whoever is taking the questions, I would want to know like what my biggest regret would be in life. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hopefully it's already happened. (laughs) Because then that means (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, all right. Uh, okay, and then horror. So we we want to know like something we uh, for like, the future like, of horror that yeah, we so, would so someone know. someone tells you you could ha- you can know any piece of information about a future horror film or property or whatever. Okay, we'll let you know right now. Okay, yeah, I'd want to know Nightmare on Elm Street. Like, what the future of that franchise holds? It's been so. I mean, Nightmare is like one of my favorite franchises, and we haven't had a good one. And God. I was thinking about this the other day. We haven't had a good Nightmare on Elm Street movie since, I mean, in my opinion, New Nightmare, because I did like New Nightmare. Um, So it's been like 25 years or whatever since that movie came out. So yeah, uh, I hope that something's going to happen soon with it. Sam wants to know if evil is truly going to die tonight. I know. I'm like, what would I ask about the Halloween franchise? Like, where would it go? What does it look like in 20 years if someone else picks it up? Will there ever be another creature from the Black Lagoon? Will there ever be another Tales from the Crypt? Like, I want to know it all. Yeah, I would love to see a Tales from the Crypt uh, revival. Yeah, I mean, talking about it, uh, was it M. Night Shyamalan supposed to do one at some point? He was, yeah, he was supposed to, and then it fa- it just never got off the ground unfortunately and i don't know i'm at the same time though like it just has to be the right studio would have to pick it up Mm -hmm. like if hbo picked it back up i'd be all for it but like if shutter if shutter picked it up i'd be like "Mm, because creep show has been bad yeah exactly and see i I wouldn't be as specific i just like to know am i ever gonna like a horror movie more than i do down the dead like is there Mm. something interesting that's that's great yeah yeah. Is there something coming that I'm going to love so much? That I'm going to be like, wow, I actually like that more than Dawn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause Dawn has the nostalgia and that's, that's a hard thing to, to beat, you know, like beating nostalgia, but right. Uh, yeah. And the thing is like, I feel like 
is there ever like a like it takes time too, right to build that movie like you watch it the first time and you're like wow that movie was great but like i don't think you would ever say oh i liked that more than dawn of the, the dead right away right like it takes time for it to simmer and like boil over and whatnot so yeah i don't know i i'd be interested to see like I mean, we've talked about this before, but like in 20 years, like what is going to be considered like a horror classic from the 90s? And I mean, I scream, I I, I would assume so. But like even like in the 2000s, I, I'll be interested to see what people consider like classics from those time periods. The Ring. Yeah, The Ring, definitely. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Ring, House of a Thousand Corpses. Um, yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I think the conjuring to some extent. Um yes. like for, for me. Definitely. Anyway. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, no, definitely. I would also want to know, will I ever appreciate the lighthouse? <laughs> Just I, keep watching it's it. It's an acquired <laughs> taste. <laughs> yeah. Uh all right. So Chuck, what is your second question? Where is the worst place you've been stuck for a long time? Mm, elevator. No doubt about it. I've been oh. stuck in an elevator twice in my life, actually both at work um one time we were in there for like a couple of hours and then the other time it was only like an hour um but yeah i mean the first time was the worst because it was right after lunchtime so everyone packed in the elevator to go back on the job so and then we got stuck for like two hours and literally you couldn't move you couldn't like sit and the guy said when he opened the elevator like to get it back open he said he could just feel like the rush of heat like come out of the elevator because it was so much body heat like packed in there so yeah but everyone didn't mind so much because we were on the clock so you know (laughs) did you freak out joe i no, i really didn't because i was like "Eh, you know someone will come like it's and i was in there if i was by myself maybe i would freak out more because like when you're by yourself you're like well shit like what if like no one comes for me you know or something like that but i feel like when you're with other people it makes it a little easier to accept it and just be like okay well we're, we're gonna be fine and even if you're not at least you have someone to kind of be there with rather than like dying alone <laughs> you're telling me you didn't freak out in the elevator when the possibilities are endless that someone could have went on a killing spree in there <laughs> the elevator could have dropped 500 stories but joe freaked out in the Corn maze. Um, corn maze <laughs> <laughs> during yeah. the middle of daytime. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I don't know. That if was I've definitely ever... an irrational. Yeah. I said that was definitely an irrational fear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank God no one farted right after lunch. Like, geez. That's oh, what god. I was thinking. Like, oh my god, that'd be uh, awful. Like, I, I got. To, I, I was moving my brother-in-law once, and he lived in the thirty-second floor. And the guy that I was helping him move with farted in the elevator. <laughs> I had like just 32 floors down and I wanted to like just die. It's like only imagine when you're, I don't know, oh eight, eight people in an elevator after lunch, all like, like I'm assuming construction guys. So. Oh, yeah, it was more than eight too. It was probably like 16. <laughs> oh, it was like shoot. packed to the gills. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was like literally like the last guy like popped in and like, you know, everyone's like squeezing because like they're like, oh, only in there for a couple, like a minute. <laughs> <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> I don't know if I've been stuck anywhere like that. I tried to think of we something. Got, oh, we, what? We got stuck. It was, but this was like a fun one to get stuck on. But we got stuck on uh, Splash Mountain at Disney World for like oh, yeah, 45 did. minutes to an hour. <laughs> yeah. They were just like, everyone that. remain seated. <laughs> That's actually part of mine. Um, same yeah. thing happened. So I got stuck on Splash Mountain for an hour um, right before the drop like under the um the scarecrows that are like hovering above you and the thing that sucked about that is it was during the halloween party the mickey's not so scary halloween party which is like five hours to begin with and i got stuck an hour (laughs) on splash mountain so it was like crazy yeah that 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 really sucked (laughs) and and it's just it's loud because they, they play that like you know don't get out of your boat message like super loud it's bright because they turn on the lights Mm -hmm. yeah Mm -hmm. that was a that was a shitty one um as far as like stuck nothing like joe like i was never stuck in that place with a bunch of people like for hours but i got stuck in traffic for eight hours like in one spot uh, because of an accident and it was like the middle of the night and it got to the point where like we were out of our cars on the highway kind of just chatting with each other between cars um it was crazy just like (laughs) Yeah, I'll, I'll never forget. I left my my friend's house at ten, 
at PM and I texted him at like 8 a.m. and I'm like, I just got home. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, it was, it was nuts. That sucked. Jeez. But I was outside and, you know, it was a nice summer night. So at least, yeah, at least it was, it was summer. Yeah, if it was winter, oh that would have been. But yeah, that happened so. <laughs> actually, uh, my sis- that happened to my sister uh, in the middle of winter. Um, what was ha- So same thing happened. It was like a blizzard and there were so many accidents that the cars were getting stuck. But what ended up happening is that people were stuck so long and keeping the heat running that they'd run out of gas. So a bunch of people on the highway are running out of gas and suddenly there's like no room to go. And my sister had to pee and she's She's like, just, she was like calling me freaking out. Like, I don't know what to do. Like I'm on the middle of highway. I can't just leave my car. I like just, yeah, I was, she was miserable. So that was, that was. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, So hopefully no one ever gets stuck anywhere. Uh, (laughs) So Chuck, what is the third question? If you had intro music, what song would it be and why? Ooh. It depends on I the just... situation. Is it like an intro? Like if my life was a movie? Is it like someone's walking into the room where I'm already at? Am I walking into the room where other people are at? Like what's the situation? The, the way I, I thought of it was anytime you enter a room, this music plays. <laughs> like regardless of where you're going. You're going to the restaurant, you're going to the bathroom, mm-hmm. you're going into the living room, whatever it is, that music like plays as you're coming in. It's like intro music. Wow, like John Travolta in uh, Saturday Night Fever, right? <laughs> <Stand. laughs> right. Oh, interesting. Um, I mean, personally, I wouldn't want any type of <laughs> that. Would, imagine that, like, that would just be like, I think life would just be terrible if every time someone walked into a room, like, intro, <laughs> there'd be just like music constantly playing. Um, I don't know, it's a great question, though. Um, in honor of Bob Saget, I'll do the Full House theme song. Oh God, no! <laughs> wow, yeah, that that'd be torture. <laughs> I don't know. This is tough. You know, I have always been a big fan of "This Is How We Do It" by Montel Jordan, but I know oh, that, that yeah. would also Bring the get party. really annoying. <laughs> People would want to party, and I'd be like, "Hey, guys, I'm I'm just walking in here. Like, I'm not trying to party right now." <laughs> yeah, um, I'm gonna go. Yeah, kind of along the same lines. In honor of my wilder days i guess you could say uh any and this is to this day like you know my friends and i are all getting to be old farts now but mm-hmm. if ever we're together and we hear sandstorm by darude play we will fucking break out into like mad dance because that was like right at our peak when that song was popular so mm-hmm. i would definitely do that yeah. I'm gonna need to see a dancing video from you, Steve. Oh no! You know, it, it, <laughs> Come like, on. We, were, we were insane. I, I'd go clubbing three times a week for two, three years. It was madness. That's oh my god. We went clubbing so much. That was like our thing. You know, it wasn't mm-hmm. bars or stuff like that. It was really clubbing. So yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, but it, I mean, I'd probably get tired of it too. I mean, it's a loud <laughs> song. You know, if I'm coming into church or something, I guess if ever I went to church, but <laughs> it'd be a weird feeling uh all right so chuck what is your last question so sam i know you're getting ready for a food pairing question for me but i'm going to change it up just a little bit because we all know that you should have chili while watching this movie because it's chili instead how about a drink recommendation thank y'all and i look forward to hearing the episode all right little chuck i actually googled a frostbite cocktail for you. So you're going to need to write this down, sir. This one is called severe frostbite. Just because what's, you know, what's a little frostbite without the severe part of it, right? (laughs) Yeah. All right. So this includes the vodka, island punch liqueur, hypnotic. Have you guys ever had hypnotic? I have, yeah. It's pretty good. Uh, it is so, so good. What it is hypnotic like, exactly? Yeah. I couldn't yeah. tell you. I should probably know, but it's like it's, um it's a liqueur, but it's like it's blue. It? It's kind of I believe it's so. So good though, but it's like it's not syrupy or like too sweet or sugary like all the artificial flavors are when it comes to liqueur, I feel like. But it tastes like um you know the Kool-Aid used to make a type of Kool-Aid where it came in um like a turquoise teal color like this color and it was it tastes just like that it is so 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 good um anyways 
And then you top it off with lemon juice and Mountain Dew, and you have a severe frostbite. That just mm. sounds lovely. I'm thirsty now. <laughs> so hypnotic is vodka, fruit juices, and cognac. Interesting. In a bottle. Cognac, mm. it is? So it's I would never... I would have never guessed. Yes, it's fruity, tropical, and it's only 34 proof. So, you know, it's kind of like a, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like that's kind of low on the alcohol content, 17%. So something good, maybe uh, you'd add to maybe like another drink. Yeah, Do you know anyone who drinks Joe. cognac? <laughs> like, it's, it seems like you're living large to me if you're drinking <laughs> that. as Agreed. A, you know, I don't know. I just picture like yeah, when I, someone drinks that. I'm think I'm thinking like some rich fat guy in a robe, rich you know, guy, with, yeah. like, uh, holding his glass from under it, kind of thing. Right, and a cigar totally. with a robe. Yeah, right, <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. Okay, wait. But going, going back to the chili portion of the question, <laughs> what do you guys like to eat your chili with? Cornbread, fries, Fritos, with nothing, a, a hot dog. What do you like to enjoy chili with? Just bread for me not, it's not, it's like its own meal you know i don't put it on mm-hmm. anything uh, really yeah you've never had a frito chili pie i'm canadian no <laughs> <laughs> steve you need a frito chili pie what exactly is a frito chili pie it's you do the fritos and then you do chili and then you add like whatever toppings you want it is so good Interesting. And do they sell that restaurant? Do you guys have Sonic or? up there? No. Not, 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 not to my knowledge, anyway. Not anywhere near I've been. I don't know. That might be like a Midwest thing, because we don't have Frito Chili Pies here either. But when I went and visited Sam, like, every place had Frito Chili Pies. <laughs> but it's good. Like, every time... That turned me on to it, for sure, because every time we have chili now, I add I put Fritos on top of my chili, and it's delicious. Mm-hmm. It's like nachos, kind of, like chili cheese nachos Mm -hmm. interesting Mm -hmm. i'll have to check out what that is um so chuck (laughs) thank you for the questions we really appreciate it and next is another audio submission this one from our buddy eric so eric what is your first question hey squad it's eric back with more audio questions i apologize to your listeners first question what natural disaster do you want to see more of on the big screen talking hurricanes blizzards tornadoes tsunamis, earthquakes, floods, pretty much anything you can think of. I would love to see a gory, gnarly, volcanic eruption horror movie. I think that that would be pretty badass. I would also love to see a good earthquake movie that does not star The Rock, because that dude does not need to be in everything. Uh, First of all, I just want to say... About The Rock. Yeah. I agree about The Rock too. If you want your money to, but, if you want your movie to make money, then you put The Rock in it. That's kind of the formula. That's right? very true. Take an action movie, yes. put him in like a beige outfit, and boof, you got The Rock and, <laughs> and money. So it's true. Uh, first of all, uh, before I answer the question, I just want to say, Eric, you're sounding extra sexy tonight. So thank you for that. Um, but as far as the question, man, yeah, we haven't had a good like volcano movie in a while. Like. God, like Dante's Peak and Volcano, those two came out and we really haven't had much since. So yeah, I think that that would be cool. Like a, or like a tsunami, I guess, because those are fucking terrifying. So like a, like a tsunami movie would be pretty cool too. So yeah. I agree. We haven't had a good Blizzard movie either though. Like I can't you think know, of anything. I like told, I, Blizzards are so scary. Like <laughs> they're literal monsters. Yeah, I mean, Cramp is sort of, but... Yeah, but it wasn't really about the blizzard as much as it was about... No, right. Um, Yeah, the last Volcano movie I saw was Pompeii, which wasn't terrible. Um, You know, based... Oh, it wasn't bad, yeah. Loosely based on a true story. (laughs) Very Uh, loosely based. Yeah, loosely based on uh, true events. I actually Um, went to Pompeii. Oh, really? How was that? It was awesome. It was amazing amazing like it's crazy like they still have like i mean you hear it but then when you actually see like the like they still have the bodies like there, like preserved in the ash it's it's like amazing um and it's just like amazing how like it 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 was preserved like man they like dug it up and like the buildings are still like there and like it's just it's wild and like then we actually got the coolest part was like 
we actually got to, to go into like a brothel from like then like and they, they still had like illustrations on the wall they were like so here's this is a brothel do you know how it's a brothel and literally there's like a penis like sticking outside like on the outside of the door um like a sculpted penis and then you walk in and like it's just like amazing like these things that are like thousands of years old like are they're still like they preserve like the paintings are still like semi-preserved like it, it's it's unbelievable but yeah i mean it was, yeah it's amazing if you can ever go i couldn't can't recommend it enough i was, I was wondering where you're going with that i thought you were gonna say look at that guy still in his glory hole <laughs> like when you said the door, <laughs> you're gonna it out. Like, wow <laughs> That's crazy. Um, yeah, and I, as far as uh, also volcanoes and tsunamis, 2012 had both. Uh, that movie was just like a smorgasbord of all the different natural disasters. Uh, but you're right. Like, uh, there hasn't been, at least in a while, I mean, not since the day after tomorrow, a uh, really good, like, blizzard uh, horror film. Uh, slash, you know, like I said, what we talked about in a few episodes ago, Ice Storm. Like, it'd be really cool to have kind of both um, just because... Mm -hmm. It is terrifying, but the thing is, you know, the thing with blizzards and ice storms, it's kind of like a, it's an event that happens a lot. You know, it's not like a, a big thing, you know, I don't know, maybe it's just not as exciting as something like a volcano or an earthquake or, you know, whatever, but I guess it's not as sensational, I guess is what it comes down to. So people won't really make mm -hmm. a movie about it. They'll make a movie around it maybe, but not necessarily about it. Uh, but volcano is definitely always impressive. I, I love Dante's Peak. I think it's a great movie. Volcanoes are terrifying, mm -hmm. man. Like, <laughs> I would not live anywhere near a volcano. I'll tell you that much. Right. Um, yeah. Like, they, when I went to Pompeii, they were talking. They were like, we know this thing's going to erupt again. Like, we just don't know when. <laughs> like, it's just like, that is crazy. <laughs> like, living there and just being like, oh, this thing could erupt like any time. Like, I was like, wow, these people are brave. But it's, I mean, it's beautiful. It's like a beautiful sight. <laughs> Yeah, be, until it explodes <laughs> right yeah exactly must be insane uh yeah. all right eric what is your second and last question the second question with frozen taking place on a ski lift it made me think what other settings are ripe for more horror i would love to see a bleak desert horror movie I'm talking chap lips dehydration wind burned skin sand everywhere Maybe some creatures, but not like Tremors worms. Just something along those lines. I think that that would be a good setting for a horror movie. Well, thanks again for the opportunity to send in questions. I love you all, and I can't wait to hear the next pod. Yeah, that'd be cool. We, I don't think we've ever really had anything like that, actually. Um, there was one kind of like that. Uh, well, not kind of, but it was in the desert where it's a uh, landmine goes click or landmine goes boom but that one was more of like a rape revenge thing more than like the animals attacking but that one was still pretty good if anyone if anyone's ever uh seen that one um what's ripe for the taking right now for horror wise i i don't know maybe like an amusement park that could be kind of cool like someone they get stuck like too. yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that has the possibilities to have like a really fun make a fun movie or terrifying <laughs> Would they be stuck like on a ride, like on a roller coaster or what? I think a roller yeah. coaster, like the whole movie is just on a roller coaster, just like how mm -hmm. this one was. Yeah. Or you see like those videos sometimes of people who get like stuck on the roller coaster or like when it's going over like a loop and they're all just like hanging upside down. Like imagine how terrifying that would be. Yeah. I saw that happen at Universal um, at oh, uh, Rip, Rip Ride Rocket. And yeah, what? yeah, they didn't get stuck for long when I saw it but I've heard of it being stuck for hours and wow, I would, <laughs> yeah, it, it would be awful. Um, I, I don't know. There's so many movies like this. Like if you look uh, at Tubi and I do a lot, they got, <laughs> they got, they got situations for everything, like stuck in an air balloon, right. stuck in, you know, like all sorts of boats, stuck on an Island, stuck on like, they just, this is a whole genre of its own being stuck somewhere. I mean, we even had, a buried alive movie with buried with uh, ryan reynolds so stuck inside a yeah. coffin for that one was pretty good i mean it was, i don't think i saw that one it's, it was long you know like it's a whole hour and a half yeah. of someone stuck in a coffin so i actually preferred the csi episode where they did something similar um which was a tarantino directed episode actually that i thought they did it better because at least you were getting 
both the coffin and the people trying to save him. Whereas this was just pure mm-hmm. coffin for you know, yeah. an hour and a half. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know where it'd be cool. Like, a, a amusement park. I mean, I'm always down for anything in an amusement park. So mm-hmm. that would be cool for yeah. sure. There was actually this movie made a couple of people's lists, best of lists from last year, 2021. So something along those lines. Um, this one was called Oxygen from last year. And it's about a woman who wakes uh, in a cryogenic chamber with no re- recollection of how she got there. As she's running out of oxygen, she must rebuild her memory to find a way out of that nightmare. So if you're looking for any suggestions, that might be one for you. Very cool. Uh, all right. And that's all we had for the audio questions. I really appreciate the audio questions. I think it adds a really cool element to the show. So thank you to those yeah. who have uh, sent some in. Uh, now for a few uh, regular questions. First one's from Poor Fan Ryan. Uh, speaking about Frozen, what would you have done in this situation? Man, me and Sam were talking about this the whole time we were watching. I would have jumped I think... long before. Yeah, I don't know. So I think two options I would have done. I would have either done what uh, Sean Ashmore's character does and like try to just, you know, go hand over hand to down the thing to try to get to one of those poles if I could find one or just try to go lower and lower. Or I would hang as low as I possibly could, like off the chair and then fall. Um. So I definitely would not have tried to climb the cable because I can't even fucking do a pull up. I can't even do a monkey bar anymore. So I would have already tipped down. But I feel like I would have thrown more stuff when the guy driving the snow plow or whatever the fuck he was driving. I would have like literally thrown so much stuff before he reversed. Um, yeah, I just I would have jumped early on, you know. And then you would have been wolf food. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I would like wolves. I love you, but I will stab you with my <laughs> ski pokey stick thing. Like I will gouge your eyes out and eat them in front of the rest of your pack. You better stay away from me. Yeah, we could talk about it, but he really didn't put up much of a fight there. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about the wolves. I, I have some <laughs> stuff about the wolves uh, during the review. Uh, okay. Uh, as far as what I would have done in this situation, um, I wouldn't have jumped right away because I would have thought kind of like they did that someone might have come like the next day to do mountain cleanup and stuff like that. Um, however, what also I also thought of is having, you know, being Canadian and getting so much snow, uh, there was a blizzard in, on that first night. And if there's anything that I know is that the packed snow uh, of a ski hill probably wouldn't cushion your fall very much but the fluffy snow Mm -hmm. that came Mm -hmm. from that blizzard would have given you more of a chance so i would have waited for Mm -hmm. the blizzard to pass and then uh hung down like like joe said as low as i could and then try to tackle uh, like my shoulder into the snow because i would probably break my arm and there's a chance i could hit my head but I think it'd be a better chance than going feet first. And just yeah, <laughs> yeah that's what I so. was thinking is like trying to hit my shoulder and just like the side of me. Cause I was like, I can run with a broken arm, but I can't run with broken legs. Right. Exactly. No, it's a, I've watched enough like ladder matches and wrestling to know that you don't just <laughs> go down feet first, you know, and pull a Sid and uh, break your leg. It's Psycho like, Sid all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you know what I'm talking about, it's disgusting. So oh, I know. Don't look it up. Um, I'm sending that video to Sam. <laughs> I think I've seen it before. That's so yeah, I think you have. I think I showed you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Next question is from Michelle. Do you think you would have survived this situation? Hmm. It depends what I mean... person I was. If I was the boyfriend, the friend, or the girlfriend. <laughs> I, you know, I don't know, 50, 50, right. I, it just all depends how you fall, I guess, you know, like if you don't break your legs, you might have a shot. Also, I feel like they were not using their coats to their advantage. Like put the hood on, zip it all the way up, get your face in there, put your arms on your stomach because your stomach like radiates so much heat. It can keep you warm. Like they were just chilling without their hoods up. And I'm like, hello. Yeah, that's what I was thinking throughout the whole film is that these people obviously haven't grown up around winter because their decisions were so stupid. It was was like hard to watch. Like that girl with the, 
with, with the missing glove. Uh, yeah. Like, there's no way that I just <laughs> keep my hand out there exposed. Like that shit right. would be on my stomach, yeah. like, you know, inside my jacket so quick that mm-hmm. yeah. that situation would just never Inside happen. the jacket and then you put it up to your mouth and you just mm-hmm. breathe into it like a little heater. Yeah. And, and you're right. Like uh, Sean Ashmore's character had a straight up big ass hood and never once blew yeah. up. Uh, yeah. He also had he also had goggles for a, a while and didn't use that yeah. at all. It's just, oh, my God. Yeah. Tie your hood up, pretend you're Kinney from South Park and call it a day. <laughs> Everyone go to sleep. We'll see each other in the morning and figure it out. Mm-hmm. I mean, they had you a know, lighter. <laughs> they could have also lit something in their in their um, like in their uh, hats or their helmets like yeah a piece of clothes that's under or something and keep that going as much as you can and at least have some warmth for a little bit i don't know these people are just not yep i was gonna say something but i forgot i lost my train okay. of thought um and her other question would any of you have actually tried jumping climbing down the lift so i think we all would have at least attempted it at some point mm-hmm. yeah i mean at some point it's die stay there or die so <laughs> you don't have a choice <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right. And the last series of questions come to us from Weezer Face. First question. Have you ever been skiing? And if so, is a chairlift really that expensive? You know, I've actually never been skiing, so I couldn't answer that, but I have heard it is pricey. But yeah, no, never, never been. Sam said she wants to go now, though, after watching this, which... No, I've, I've always wanted to go skiing. Okay. I just told Joe, I was like, we should go because, like, don't people mm-hmm. ski a lot up here? Mm-hmm. Do they? Okay. <laughs> I feel yeah. like don't they go to Vermont or Maine or somewhere? Yeah, yeah Vermont. 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 Yeah, Vermont. Yeah. yeah, Vermont's big. Maine. There's like a couple in Massachusetts. They're not. They're more like smaller hills, but most people go to Vermont because that's where the big one mountains are. Yeah. Um. I've been skiing. I mean, uh, it was. <gasps> you have. Yeah. I mean, it was, you had to. <laughs> you had to in school. It was like a thing. Oh, where... that's amazing. We go to snow camp and Steve probably got all the little snow bunnies. I can just see him. <laughs> I, I hate it. <laughs> like I, I am not, <laughs> I was not born to ski. I was just the worst skier ever. I, I couldn't, I just couldn't figure it out. You know? Um, so I, I have done it a few times, but I didn't enjoy it. And oh, now that I'm an adult, bad. I will never go back. <laughs> as far as it is a chairlift really expensive. No, a chairlift is free. Uh, skiing is expensive you know it's right just, they're not charging you at this chairlift they're charging you at the gate which is mm-hmm. was a whole like kind of weird thing why are they already at the chairlift without having gone through any type of you know <laughs> checkpoint at some point <laughs> um, so no mm-hmm. the chairlift is not that expensive skiing i mean it's it's skiing i can only uh equate it to like local theme parks like not not disney or something like that but like a regular you know local theme park like six flags it's expensive if you go once but if you go all like season long you get a pass that's not that much more than not one time you you go so Mm -hmm. usually like for example the six flags where my city was a season pass was like 150 but going once was 80 so skiing is kind of the same way you if you go like one shot at a time to different mountains then yeah it's probably going to be super expensive but if you go to the same mountain a lot you buy a kind of a season pass and it's not that bad so that's kind of how skiing works at least in my area that's the trick to it right um her next question did parker's monologue being worried about her puppy at home make anyone else cry or is that just me (laughs) no definitely sam i cried (laughs) Sam cried a lot in this movie actually I did yeah I got really emotional in this movie Mm -hmm. um it was sad but no I didn't cry (laughs) but you were thinking about it you were thinking about crying (laughs) sure (laughs) yeah I I didn't cry either but I can relate if I had a puppy at home I also would think more about the puppy at home than I would about my own predicament Uh, that's just the way my brain is wired like i care more about (laughs) my loved ones which includes pets Mm -hmm. more so than myself so that's i could relate to her on that level Uh, so it was sad but not i didn't cry i mean i was i can (laughs) see how it looks like i'm on this ski lift all by myself (laughs) right uh and the last question this week still from weezer face how come last week nobody answered wolf to the exotic pets question is it because they're just ultra dogs 
Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah, it's basically like having a dog. So if I'm going to have an exotic gamble, I'd want something a little crazier. How cool were they in like Game of Thrones? You know, all their wolf pets were fucking oh, yeah. awesome. So, mm-hmm. I mean, wolves would be a really crazy cool pet, but yeah, yeah, it's not exotic to me. I think mean, the wolf is not super exotic. We have them here. So it's not like a, I was thinking more mm-hmm. stuff that we don't have here, you know? So, mm-hmm. all right. So uh, thank you, by everyone, for the questions. We really appreciate them. And we really appreciate you taking the time to ask us those questions. And now something different for once, something special. In fact, we have a temporary new sponsor on the show. I mean, we we love Deadly Grounds Coffee and you should definitely check them out. They're struggling right now because of the shutdown in Ontario where they're based out. So definitely shout out to them. But this week, we uh, like to give a new shout out to Silk City Hot Sauce and uh, check out the little ad. Uh, it's, uh, they got some good deals because if you, uh, you know, use our code. So listen in. Greetings, Spice fans. Silk City Hot Sauce is now sponsoring the Dorkening Podcast Network. Our craft sauces are made in Vermont in small, high-quality batches using locally sourced, farm-grown ingredients. Silk City Hot Sauce comes in a variety of heat strengths and killer flavors like Jezebel, Erotic Fever, Mango Madness, and Good Morning Jonestown. And don't forget our newest creation, Hot Syrup. Make no mistake, Spice fans, this is the queen of sweet heat. There's new and unique flavors coming out all the time. Best of all, right now, listeners of the Dorkening Podcast Network can go to SilkCityHotSauce.com and use coupon code DORK. Not only will you get 20% off your order, we'll also throw in a free bottle of hot sauce. That's SilkCityHotSauce.com. Coupon code DORK. All right, what watch? Yes, what watch? I don't Sam. Think I have anything. Oh, do I have yeah. something, Joe? Yeah. Yes. I just I post. love that you just you know what I've watched. Well, it's all, well, why are just know the ones we watched together? What are we um, gonna talk about, Joe? So let's talk about uh this 2021 release we watched on Netflix by the name of Intrusion. Do you remember Intrusion. that one? Intrusion. Yes. I don't. Okay, so this one is about a uh, husband and wife. They moved to from Boston to, um, I don't know, somewhere out west in the desert somewhere. But uh, they built a new house. Oh, they yes, moved yes, in. yes, yes. Yes. Um, and yeah, they're living what seems to be a very happy life. When one night they come home after a beautiful dinner and there are burglars inside of their house. And yeah, so the husband ends up murdering uh, these home intruders. And from there, we go down uh, an interesting road of twists and turns as the wife starts to look into these intruders and why maybe they possibly broke into the house. And um, yeah, it seems like there may have been some sort of connection between this husband and these intruders and does she truly really know her husband and we'll leave it at that (laughs) um yeah so i did not like this movie uh really at all um uh, over on letterbox i uh just said basically it's like a shitty uh lifetime movie but with like a better production value uh and yeah i stick by it uh it's just like really fucking cheesy like the whole way through um and then like like we have like this really like weird twist that cu- to me it just kind of like came out of left field and i still don't even know think it was fully explained all that well so yeah this one was like a total miss for me yeah i really don't have anything else to add i barely remembered the movie so you liked it. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't you awful. It. it was better than a Lifetime movie. Barely. But Joe just <laughs> wasn't paying attention. He, he was on his phone, so he, like, didn't get the whole thing. Mm, nah, I got most. I got the gist. <laughs> oh, okay. Like, not a, not a great endorsement for me, guys, on that one. So I think I'll no. pass on this one. Um, Big skip. Yeah. Uh, so my first one this week is... 
So my first 2022 film, uh, which is going to be available on VOD and theaters as of January 14th. So we got a screener for this one, and it's called Stoker Hills, starring Mr. Tony Todd. So this one is about a group of students who have to make a uh, film for their final project at school. They're in film school. And uh, so they go and decide to make, and I'm not even kidding you, a mix of The Walking Dead and Pretty Woman. That, that's their intended uh, film. So they go out and start filming this movie. And then all of a sudden, their uh, friend who's playing the hooker in the film gets kidnapped by a real killer. And the real killer brings her to this like abandoned place. And the two filmmaker guys follow her. And this is all like found footage style. And then they go after him. And then a bunch of stuff happens. And, uh, you know, the footage kind of shows their adventure throughout how they're looking for her. And then finally, the footage ends when the killer kind of knocks the camera out of their hand. And then you see a firefighter grab the footage, bring it to some cops. And then the rest of the story is like a regular film style. And it follows the detectives as they're trying to break down this case by using the footage that was shot from those students uh, to try to find them before they're killed or it's too late. So first thing I'm going to say about this movie, uh, bring a barf bag uh, when you're watching this, because the first 20 minutes of this movie is so shaky. Like these people are supposed to be film students. And they can't hold the camera steady for like a second. It's really disgusting. Like I was, I was getting sick watching it and I watch a lot of shit like this. It was bad, like real, real bad. Uh, thankfully, 20 minutes in, they switched to a regular style film and that was a relief, but the movie doesn't exactly get any better from there. It's a pretty bland police investigation story that really I just couldn't get behind, to be honest with you. And um one of the biggest issues with the film is that, and I won't say it obviously because it's a brand new film, but I saw where this movie was heading within the first five to 10 minutes of it. And because I had a feeling of where that movie would go, I didn't care about what happened next. And that kind of ruined the whole experience for me. Um, so that was what happened I guess on my end and for a movie that's starring Tony Todd he is in it for like maybe three or four minutes you know at the beginning uh and a little bit like a minute at the end so you know it's just one of those things uh I was personally disappointed by it but I am glad I saw it and that's Stoker Hills over on Video On Demand and theaters all right next movie what else did we watch Joe Okay, we watched a little gem over on Amazon Prime called The Lie. Uh, this one is from 2018. Uh, it is a Welcome to Blumhouse film, if you remember those. I don't know if they're still doing those. Uh, but yeah, this one um, stars uh, Joey King, who a lot of you guys might know from uh, Sam, The Conjuring. What else? Um, I wasn't prepared. Um, Joey <laughs> King. I mean, she's been in everything. Okay, she was also in Slender Man and the Slender, Act. The Act, yes. Yes, maybe most notably for the Act. Uh yeah. So she is, you know, an adolescent girl going to band camp. I believe it is with her no, father. She's going to That's ballet band camp. Where are they going? She's going to ballet. Ballet camp. school. Okay, ballet camp. So she's going to ballet camp with her dad. Um, on the way there, she sees one of her friends on the side of the road waiting for a bus or whatever. So she says, hey, dad, can we pick up uh, my friend? So the dad said, sure. So uh, they are driving and, you know, they like teenage girls do. They're kind of bickering a little bit in the back seat. Um, when the friend says, uh, can you pull over? I have to pee. So uh, they both, the both girls go together to pee, and the father all of a sudden hears a scream while out in these woods. He runs into the woods, and he finds his daughter there standing over a bridge in a creek without the friend. And the girl, uh, his daughter says, Dad, she fell into the creek, and the dad starts freaking out, tries to save her, um, can't find her. He's like, we got to call the police. Well, the daughter admits right then and there dad i pushed her and from there it's a, a web of cover-ups from the dad the daughter and 
the soon to be, we find out uh, his ex-wife gets involved as well. Um, and it just goes down uh, a crazy, crazy, one crazy decision after another. Um, yeah. Or should I say one illogical choice after another? Because this was right. quite easily one of, one of the worst movies I've seen Here in a go, long folks. time. All right. Um, <laughs> this <laughs> This was so bad. And like literally, I don't rate a lot of movies like under two stars. This one I gave one star because I I just couldn't fathom like the like illogical decisions that were made throughout this like entire movie. Like it's just like one completely dumb choice after the other that like really has like like it's just not like built in any sort of like no logical person would do this in real life. So it's just like completely took me out of the movie um but you know it was still like okay like okay up and like for, to a point where i was like okay well the movie like looks beautiful like cinematography wise like because it's set in the winter time so like it had like that is really the only good thing i can really say about this movie um but then the twist happens and it is one of the most outrageously ridiculous stupid twists like i've ever seen in a movie or like in i've seen in a very long time and once that happened I like just, I like the cringe and the, my eyes just rolled into the back of my head. So I, 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 you just do not watch this movie. Like I just, there's nothing good there. I have nothing else to add, but I totally agree with Joe. Um, it was only because it was shot in winter. That's why I kept watching. Cause you guys know how I am about my winter gloomy movies. Awesome. You liked it. I didn't. <laughs> bad week for you guys <laughs> yeah um all right my second one because i have three this week but so i'm cheating a little bit todd's not here uh my second one is uh i, I decided after we did lake placid last week that i was going to tackle this series because i never watched the rest of them there are six in total if you can believe it uh, different lake placid films and i heard that they were absolute garbage so i was curious i had to ch- i had to see it for myself so i watched uh, lake placid two and three uh, so far, uh, it's 2007 and 2010, I believe. And they're both made for TV movies. Uh, they kind of follow very similar plot points to the first one. Um, in the second one in particular, old lady who happens to be the sister of Betty White's character now has now taken over uh, feeding the crocodiles in, in the lake, in Black Lake or whatever, uh, because she was killed. And um, those crocodiles start you know, attacking people. So a uh, rich hunter comes in and wants to take the crocodiles and make trophies out of them. So the uh, county sheriff and everything band together with uh, the wildlife people and uh, try to get those crocodiles. And three is kind of the same thing where it's a family moving into the area. And in this one, it's their kid that's feeding the crocodiles. So it's really basically the same plot (laughs) with another hunter brought in, you know, rinse and repeat. I got to say, this is getting this is this is gonna sound weird. I think I like these movies more than the original. Um it's like basically like watching Lake Placid with lesser stars, a lower budget, but way more action. Like in these movies, the croc you see the crocodiles a lot, and they they have so many fucking cool kills and all that kind of stuff. Now the CGI uh is not not great by any means. But it's also not the worst. Like I've seen a lot of low budget movies that had way worse uh, creatures than this. And honestly, they were super entertaining. Now, of course, it didn't have the charm that Betty White does. And that was definitely sorely lacking. But other than that, the characters are more likable. The actions, uh, there's more action. There's more kills. There's more gruesome deaths. There's more, there's just more of everything. And honestly, I, I kind of like these more. So, uh, I mean, they're not great movies by any means, but I really enjoyed both Lake Placid 2 and Lake Placid 3. So now I'm looking forward to seeing the other three movies in the, in the series, which is the last chapter, Lake Placid versus Anaconda, and um, I New Legacy, I think, or something like that, the last one. So, uh, yeah, I'm just saying, like, don't believe everything you hear about it. Uh, if you're just looking to have a fun crocodile movie, Lake Placid 2 and 3 are pretty much it. All right. All right. New Legacy. Oh. What do you think that one's about? Uh, it's it's a reboot they did in 2018, so it's probably just 
crocodile comes back the, the, <laughs> the black lake you know they've had like 80 crocs in that lake at this point but they're always surprised it's like oh my god a yeah. croc in the lake how did that happen <laughs> another <laughs> yeah, I, i'm actually the one i'm really looking forward to is uh, lake placid versus anaconda but <laughs> that, that's gonna require more out of me because now i feel i need to watch the anaconda series yeah and so, oh, they, yeah. so I could watch both as they intersect to each other. So once I finish like class four, I'm gonna know watch the Anacondas. But I enjoyed it. Like I really thoroughly enjoy them. So this one's not a chore so far. It's not like a fucking evil bong, you know. It's uh I'm actually really mm-hmm. enjoying it so far. So hopefully it keeps up that Good. really to hear. TV movie cheese that is mm. so good. How many anacondas are there? Just like like five as well. Five? Yeah. Whoa. yeah, there's quite a bit of them. So mm-hmm. that's crazy. Yeah. Did you have another? Uh, Very nice. You guys are. I mean, I have a couple, but I'll save them for next week. All right. Oh, I, you got I, was gonna, I, I was gonna add one more that I wanted uh, to mention. Okay. Just really oh, quickly. yeah, go for it. Go for it. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to say that I uh, binged Dexter New Blood over the weekend. Uh, I hate watching television shows weekly. It's just like I get into a groove and to get like that groove like stopped every week just really bothers me. So I waited until the last episode was coming out and then binged the whole series so I can watch the last episode. Uh, Of course, I'm going to keep it spoiler free because it just came out. But I got to say, I really enjoyed this new season. Uh, I'm very happy that they did it. It was definitely a better ending than the original uh, ending, which I thought was maybe the worst ever so i mean the bar was pretty low to begin with but the series the season itself i thought was super solid uh really a great performances all around i really like where they took the dexter character and the other characters that are in the show they introduced an amazing villain which is played by clancy brown who i mean is just fucking good in everything and uh yeah i thoroughly enjoyed the season now i have issues with the finale and that's part of a big discussion we're having on our Discord page is what they should have done with the finale. They did the typical TV mistake of like, they, they do this like sweet thing where they're building up this, like ramping up this storyline throughout the season. And then they get to the last episode and they rush like the end of the story into one episode. You know, Game of Thrones did this and uh, Dexter did this and a bunch of other shows do this. It's like, if this episode, if this show had maybe two more episodes, I think I thought it could have been stellar, but they kind of rushed it at the end there. And unfortunately it didn't, it, it wasn't like a great payoff, but it was definitely way better than the original series. So I'm glad I watched it. Like, I, I thought it was a really cool season. I'm excited to watch it. I freaking loved Dexter so much. I was so sad when it was over. Like, I don't think I had really been enthralled or like obsessed with the show until I saw Dexter. And then I kind of understood how people can become obsessed with shows and stuff like that. But it's so good. And like, I didn't really mind with how it ended just because I was like, "Eh, it is what it is, whatever. Um, But I'm really excited to watch it. I cannot wait. I told joe that he needs to watch dexter because he's i think he's only maybe seen season one or two um but i think i might have to give it like a rewatch you know yeah yeah i definitely want to finish it (gasps) for sure i do have a question does dexter still wear his tight khakis that's all i need to know uh not at first uh so okay so so mild very mild spoilers to the season he doesn't start the season as dexter like he's assumed another identity uh for this season and slowly through events of the show he like goes back into like his dexter kind of role and the more he goes into the dexter role the more he goes into like the clothes he used to wear Mm -hmm. and even more interesting than that and something i thought was really cool that i noticed is that the music is really unlike Dexter when you start mm-hmm. the season. And the more you get to the end of the season, the more they like insert cues of the old Dexter music. Oh, and then by the that. end, they go like full Dexter music. And it's just, I love how oh they did that. God. I thought it was really cool. Uh, a really cool touch too. Yeah. Oh, that makes me mm-hmm. even more excited. Yeah, no, it's a, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. And uh, so is it just like a one season thing, Steve, or? It was just like, uh, let's wanna, re-end it? 
I, I okay. don't want to say I don't want to say because it might spoil the ending. Um, but okay. it's, it seems they're not even sure. <laughs> Uh, because it. yeah for reasons I don't want to really say anything mm-hmm. that would even okay. hint to anything so yeah I, I'm kind of surprised by your review Steve because I've seen like the majority of negative like online about the finale Shocker. and it's sitting I just looked on don't say I just anything Joe I, I'm, I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying people it's currently sitting at a 4.6 on IMDB so it seems to be mainly negative um so now I'm really interested what in seeing they know? Like, how this ended. No, I mean, no, I mean, hey, everyone's different. Yeah, that's for sure. I, I've, I've how was the Discord? What? Uh, like half, half. Uh, half people half, liked half, it. Half yeah. people didn't like it. I think everyone had issues with it, uh, but mm-hmm. you know, some people were like, kind of, you know, fine with it. Some people were like, no, this is. I've heard even people say this is worse than the way they originally ended no. it, which I don't Ooh. agree with personally. But it's it's a very okay. mixed bag. Although I think almost everyone i spoke to anyway love the season it's the ending well, they had an issue with well what does eric think i trust his opinion on Dexter. <laughs> uh, eric said well, eric and i are on the same page as to okay. both liking everything but and we actually agree on what they should have done for the end of this season but yeah definitely worth a watch. All, right. all right well I'm going to probably binge definitely the la- how many seasons are there total like 10 eight including the new one? eight total yeah all right so I, I I don't think I need to rewatch seasons 1 and 2 cuz I remember yes, you them do. pretty well but... all right fine I'll oh you watch remember all them well yeah who was the killer in Dexter season 1 Dexter season 1 I don't know I remember it's like a dude that's like he's like driving around in some truck or something (laughs) (laughs) it's about a killer joe that's it well yeah it's basic question (laughs) well uh we'll get back to you i'm definitely because i definitely want to watch it especially if sam and i end up going to monster mania in march since they're doing that big uh dexter reunion so i feel like i owe it to myself if we end up going happens the way covid cases are going right now they just i was supposed to go to i know probably not we're supposed to go to a concert on friday and that got canceled so all righty well interestingly enough todd disappears tonight with me being in the lead for trivia so uh we (laughs) we are not doing trivia tonight so instead we are bringing back horror news which we haven't done in quite a long time um so yeah (laughs) So yeah, I got a few little stories for you guys. Obviously not a ton is happening right now with the, with the new year happening and stuff. Not kind of a slow time horror wise, but we do have Scream being released today. The day you're listening to this episode, uh, Scream 5. So uh, unfortunately, Steve will not be able to see it right away because it's in theater. So I know a lot of people are in similar situations. So if you can't make it out to the theaters to see the new Scream, perhaps you want to know a little bit more about the story that inspired Scream as Discovery uh, the Discovery Plus is going to be premiering today, January 14th, uh, is going to be pre- releasing Scream, the true story, which delves into the real life horror of a murderer who uh, believes he was possessed by a demon. So uh, this one is going to um, take a closer look at the alleged diabolical forces involved and whether Rawlings' spirit still lurks in the shadows. So here's a little uh, synopsis about it. Beginning in 1989, Danny Rollin stalked and murdered eight victims in Shreveport, Louisiana, and Gainesville, Florida, including five college students. Rawlings claimed he was possessed by a demon named Gemini when he committed his crimes. He was, evict- he was eventually convicted and executed in 2006. Now, paranormal investigator Steve Shippey and renowned psychic medium Cindy Kaza joined forces to uncover the truth behind Rawlings' claims that a demon made him kill. So, that eh, could be interesting. Something to watch. So, yeah, I really don't know a whole hell of a lot about, like, the actual uh, murders that inspired Scream. Do you guys, like, do you guys ever look into it? I feel like Michelle and I talked about this on Let's Not, but I I can't remember what happened. Mm-hmm. All right. Well... Maybe we'll watch it and get back to you on what watched next week. (laughs) Uh, All right. So uh, next bit of news here is uh, Universal Pictures is going to be developing a new take on the Phantom of the Opera, um, which 
I think this could be interesting because like in the original Phantom of the Opera, not like, you know, the Broadway play, um, you know, we don't see a lot involved with Phantom of the Opera these days. Um, and here is the most interesting part about this. Uh, John Legend himself will be producing uh, this one. Uh, so this one is going to be set in the sultry nightlife scene of modern day New Orleans, the world of jazz, R&B, neo soul and funk. Uh, the French Quarter where New Orleans is not only known as America's most haunted city, but the music, French Creole culture, the voodoo mystique, masquerade pageantry of Mardi Gras just lent itself to a natural adaptation of the Paris setting. And the story has revenge, unrequited love, and mystery. So I don't know if uh, this is going to be a horror movie per se with John Legend producing. Um, But, you know, it could be interesting. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Any thoughts on that? Sounds like Candyman too. Yeah, yeah. Don't maybe. try it, John. <laughs> <laughs> Just joking. It could be interesting. Who knows? I wonder who will direct it. Yeah, I don't know. It's uh, right now it's slated um, for a release in 2023. So, oh. well, what do you we'll, think, we'll Joe? I know see. that you're like a huge fan of the. What I like the Broadway it? play. Broadway play, yes. Yeah, I, I do enjoy the Broadway play of Phantom. Um, you know, I I don't think I've ever fully seen like the full. I've seen bits and pieces of the original with uh, Lon Chaney, but I don't think I've seen like the entire um, movie. So, uh, I yeah, I mean, I I really can't talk on it too much, other than I assume I assume it's going to be more of like a love story like thing, more than like a them t- doing a horror take on it, but. It could be interesting if they make it like a gothic horror love story type thing, but I don't know. I don't know. I'm not a big John Legend person, so <laughs> we'll, we'll just have to see. Will he pull a Rob Zombie and cast his wife, Chrissy T? I hope not. Oh, God. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> All see, right. Folks. We will see. We'll keep you updated, maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, Amazon's I Know What You Did Last Summer TV series has officially gotten the axe, ladies and gentlemen. After just one season, they have pulled the plug on the show. Uh, yeah. So I guess due to bad ratings, I really don't know anyone that actually watched the show. Me neither. And not that. a single person. <laughs> I'm going to watch it, you guys, and I'll report back. Yeah, okay, but... Yeah, I don't know a thing. I, I even honestly, if it wasn't for this show, I wouldn't even have known this thing was a thing. You know, like this news kind of came at me like, oh right, that show. Yeah. I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they say so. They said the good news for those who haven't started the show but may want to check it out is that the first season's finale does wrap up the central mystery, mostly answering the big questions. So I guess if you do want to watch it, it kind of wraps things up and. uh yeah, so I, I don't think that's a, that one's a big shocker. I mean, I only watched the trailer, but just oh, based on I the trailer. I have the trailer. Do you get like a CW vibe from it, Joe? Very, yeah, very much. I think this could be something you might enjoy, Sam, because mm. um, it definitely has like that sort of vibe to it for sure. Just something not for like my Grown. an adult, like a male, and then is in his like four, almost like mid thirties. <laughs> yeah. Right, totally. But okay. you know, it seemed like more definitely for the CW crowd for sure. So, all right. Next bit of news: Evil Dead Rise. We are getting Evil Dead Rise uh, this year, and uh, the, they're titling it "The Year of the Deadite." As post production is well underway, uh, director Lee Cronin, who um, did the Hole in the Ground, which did we cover on this show? It might have been pre. It might have been pre the yeah, Horror Squad maybe, podcast. Pre Horror Squad, if yeah. Did. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was actually a very good movie. I recommend it if no one's ever seen it before. Um, but he will be directing it, and he recently came out on Twitter and uh, said they are well, well into um, post development uh, on that. So, man, I don't know. It would be interesting, you know. No Bruce Campbell in this one, um, no Ash. So where do you go from here? And it's not going to take place in the woods. It's going to take place in the city. So, I mean, I don't know, like I, maybe this is the right way to go with this franchise, right? Like instead of just like doing the same thing over and over again, I kind of like that they're going a different direction here. So maybe this is the start of like a breathing new air into the franchise. 
I agree. It's uh, you can't just rehash it over and over the same story. You know, uh, the last one uh, that was done in 2013 or whatever, uh, it was great. You know, but I don't want to see that story again. You know, a third time. So uh, maybe switching the territory up is going to be uh, interesting, or it could be a total bomb. Who knows? Well, mm-hmm. I'm definitely interested to find out. That's the one that's high on my anticipation list for 2022. Yeah. That one's not going to theaters either, I don't think. I believe that's going to be like an HBO Max Is it? exclusive or some. I believe so. I, I, I don't think it's getting a theater release. I could be wrong about that, but I thought I read it was going to be a direct to streaming uh, type thing, which isn't a bad thing anymore. Like, you used to hear direct to streaming and like it would automatically be like, no, yeah, I'm yeah, good. Like, oh, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. like almost like a TV yeah. movie. You know, like, oh my God. Right. Yeah. Right. But now it's like, I mean, look at last year's number one, according to our master list, last year's number one horror movie, Malignant, was direct to HBO Max, you know, even though it did get a small theater release too. But I mean, so, I mean, the the days of uh, direct to streaming being bad is well over. Uh, all right. So the next bit of news here, this one is very, sounds very fun. And I, I'm excited for this. Um, so we just had the holiday season. And I'm sure a lot of you watched tons of Christmas horror movies. Well, uh, slated for release in 2023, we are going to be getting a horror Christmas documentary called Yuletide Horror. Uh, So this one is going to feature interviews with horror experts, filmmakers, and scholars. Uh, It will chart the history of the holiday season's roots from disturbing folklore from around the world to the genre's proliferation and unyielding appeal in modern day horror cinema. Um, so they will be exploring all Christmas horror movies and folklore and stuff. So that could be really, really fun. So, uh, 2023, keep an eye out for that. Alrighty. Alrighty. Next bit of news, the train to Busan remake. It's happening. Ladies and gentlemen, whether you want it to happen or not, um, but it, yes, we are, yes, we're getting it. Go figure. Yes. We're getting an American remake, and it will be titled The Last Train to New York. Oh, Lord. (laughs) Well, they have officially given the release date. We will be seeing The Last Train to New York pull into theaters on April 21st, 2023. Um, Currently, uh, the director for this is Timo Tahanto who did, um, some of you might know him from The Night Comes For Us, May the Devil Take You. And he also did a short in uh, VHS 94, which I'm assuming is the the one with uh, all the machines and shit yeah, in that one I... that I really liked. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, he's done some oh. cool stuff. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't know. I, it just seems like so unnecessary. And then I just saw that they just, that it's not American, but they just remade One Cut of the Dead, too. Yeah, they uh, did. It's just called One Cut, I think. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and it's it's a French, uh, the French remake that one. Um, it's just like, I don't know, like remaking movies that are less than like ten years old. <laughs> it's just like I don't get this new trend. Like, I mean, I, I get like most American audiences, I guess, don't, don't want to read subtitles, so like that's obviously why they do it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, we'll it's see, done, I it's done on TV all the time, right? Like, uh. Yeah. If, if you watch a show like The Office, for example, there are nine different right. countries who do their own interpretation of that show, including the US. So, you know, it came from the UK originally. So, and I'm not surprised that movies are kind of going that same route where they're kind of localizing their own films. But it's just, I don't know. I, as someone who watches any movie, you know, as most of us do, but you're right, a lot of people don't and probably will never watch Train to Busan and that's a shame because it's like one of the best movies ever, but uh, right. yeah, it's, 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 it is what it is. Do you think it has potential? I'd have to see it. You know, um, yeah. if they keep the, at its core that it's about a father and daughter, you know, trying to survive the apocalypse and not make it mm-hmm. about the zombies, like the zombies were kind of just there to amplify the story rather than being the story itself. I think they could make it successful, but knowing how these things go, a rich producer is going to be like, people like fast zombies and murders. So that's what we're going to do and completely forget the whole point of Train to Busan. So I guess we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yes. All right. Well, here's an interesting one. Um, so after the lukewarm response from Spiral from the Book of Saw, which pulled in $40 million worldwide, which was 
under expectations um, from the studio, but apparently it was enough for them to want to make another Saw movie because we are going to be getting a new Saw movie. Um, The writer who wrote Spyro from the book Saw is coming back for this one, and he has confirmed that um, this one, he said, if you are fans of John Kramer, who, of course, was the original uh, Jigsaw killer, he said you are going to be very happy. He said, uh, so that's really all he teased. So, which I mean, I think is probably the smart way to go bring him back. Cause like he is saw without him. I just, I really don't know if the franchise works as well. Um, but what do you do here? Like, I guess it, we still have yet to get a origin story really. Right. And we've seen stuff in flashbacks, but I guess, uh, but, but he's a, like, there he, is he's an also aged story. a lot. <laughs> yeah. But his origin story is saw. He didn't do it before, really. Right. Right? right. He started when he was old and dying. So it's not mm-hmm. like he was a young serial killer, you know? So that's kind of the issue is that there really isn't an origin story here. I don't know what they're gonna do. Like, you know, they've done they've done people killing as an influence to him because of his influence. They've done people that worship him and like have his like his uh memorabilia and do the killing. They've mm-hmm. even done spoiler for one of them i won't say which one in case you haven't seen him uh where it's like a the whole film is actually a flashback and you didn't know until the end of the film Mm -hmm. it was something that happened while he was still alive so they're running out of angles you know so it's uh i feel like they're gonna try to be like oh here's his son that no one knew about and now he's like saw legacy You know, I wouldn't hate that compared to some of the other twists they've done, I guess, you know, like at least there's like some family ties there, you know, I mean, but we'll see. Uh, Yeah, like I said, bringing Kramer back, I think is the best thing for this franchise, but I really, there's not much else you can do that's going to shock or surprise people with this franchise. So I guess the best thing you can do is just keep making really good traps. That's, that's what is going to pull people in at this point. Yeah. But if they do go the route of his son... May I suggest that they cast the one and only Tom Holland? And by the way, <laughs> where's my Tom Holland Discord channel at? Why has oh, no one okay. talked about Tom Holland from last week's episode? No one agrees with me that he's a cutie patootie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like no, a, no one talked about it at all. No one said anything about <laughs> Spider Man at all. Oh, Looks Spider-Man, like I'm yeah. on the ski but, lift again by myself. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe once he makes uh, a horror film. Yeah, yeah, maybe that'd be interesting. I think he'll be on that Spider-Man train for a while, though. We'll see. All right, next bit of news for you collectors out there. Very exciting news as NECA has announced next coming next year they are going to be releasing a Krampus line. They haven't announced exactly what they're going to do yet, but I'm assuming we're going to get a Krampus figure and maybe some of his minions. I don't really know. They didn't really leave any details, but. A Krampus line coming next year. That is pretty cool. I'm excited for that. I'm, uh, that's something I'll definitely be picking up because they don't make a lot of Krampus memorabilia. So we shall see. All right. Have to give a shout out to my boy, Frederick Krueger, who has officially been entered into the National Film Registry at the Library of Congress. So a huge congratulations. That is huge, ladies and gentlemen. A horror movie, Nightmare on Elm Street. I mean, obviously other horror movies have made it in the past. But for, you know, uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street to make it into the National Film Registry, that's that's really a, a testament um, to Freddy, Freddy Krueger and to Wes Craven and all that. Um, some of the other horror movies that have made it in the past include Dracula, Bride of Frankenstein, Alien, Psycho, Rosemary's Baby, The Shining, The Exorcist, and now A Nightmare on Elm Street. So rejoice, horror fans. They rejoice. What is that? <laughs> Can you explain what that is to those of us who don't know? Sure. Yeah. So um, Steve can probably, Steve, Steve being the film major probably can explain this a little better than I can. Yeah. So uh, Congress has a committee that chooses works of art every year that they deem to be historically uh, important to the culture of your country. And they call it the Library of Congress. So they pick like novels, they pick uh, music, they pick, you know, and movies. So they pick, it's not a big group of movies it's like 20 a year or something it's it's a pretty small list 
and they deem them important to American culture and should be like preserved officially by the federal government. And that's what that is. So to be chosen for that list is a huge honor, you know, and that's uh, amazing. Yeah, so that's what it is. Do you guys know any of like the music that has been selected for that? Yeah, this is an uh, example, a, a bunch of like super, you know, I'm imagine, sure Michael it, Jackson's in there. Imagine by John <laughs> Lennon and uh, okay, wow. you know, like, like really songs you would know that had like a big impact to people are on that list so wow mm-hmm. yes so and now you- he's gonna raise his prices even more <laughs> i don't know we'll see <laughs> uh all right just a couple more little pieces here um sam and i are big have been big fans we've been watching yellow jackets over on showtime it's just been renewed for uh picked up for season two so for those of you who are, uh, have been watching that um we'll give um next week is the season finale so uh, we will give probably our recap on the whole season on next week's What Watched. So, yeah. All righty. And uh, all right. So I had to throw this in here for Sam. I know, I believe we talked about this on the Discord before, but we never talked about it on the show. Um, Sci-Fi Original is going to be doing Bring It On, Cheer or Die. Um, it is going to be uh, a Halloween movie based on the bring it on franchise um i i just was in here for sam because i know she is like really into that it's going to be premiering uh in the fall of 2022 so sam i know you're a fan i just wanted to hear your thoughts on a bring it on halloween movie i mean i'm only a fan of the original one joe not the second okay one. the second not one with one after sh- we we actually have a listener that was in one of the sequels chuck I believe oh, was yeah, in Bring It On. Yes, I yeah. forgot all about that. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited. What's not spooky? What's not what's what's spooky cheer without some horror and cheerleaders? Okay. I'll watch it. Will it be great? Probably not. I was thinking like what would happen if they did the reverse of that and be like, we're making a saw film, uh, but it's gonna be a romantic comedy. You know, so uh, <laughs> yeah. And I was, right. I was, at first, I was like, "That's ridiculous," but then I'm like, well, "I totally watch it." <laughs> but you know, <laughs> it's, it's weird for a movie to switch genre. I don't think they'll do mm-hmm. it really. I think it's just going to be bring it on with a little bit of a Halloween twist. But yeah, I, I, I want them to go like balls to the wall, like horror. <laughs> that would be like the best. But I don't think they have the nuts to do it. Right. Uh, well, here's the, the plot synopsis on it. So uh, it's going to follow a cheer squad as they practice their routines overnight in an abandoned school during Halloween weekend, where one by one, the teens fall victim to a deranged assailant. So it sounds like it's going to be uh, a slasher style film. So it seems like they're going to be dialing up the horror in this one. So, you know, could be worth a, a review, a fun review uh, for Halloween time. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> Definitely. But I'm going to tell you right now, I will get kicked off the cheer team because if you're trying to make me practice on Halloween weekend, I don't (laughs) think so, coach. It's my time. It's my season. See you later. (laughs) All right. And uh, all right. The last bit of news here. I wanted to do this one for the Discord book club, which um, I am definitely not a member of as I have not read any of the books over there. But I know a lot of you guys, uh, you have guys got a decent little book. What is the next book, uh, Steve, you guys doing? Have you guys discussed that yet? Uh, yeah, it's Interview with the Vampire in honor of Anne Rice, who passed away like a month ago at this point. So that's what okay. the book will be. All right. Very cool. Um, yeah. And if you're not a member of our Discord or if, you know, you just want to join the book club, get on over to our Discord. We will send you a link. All you gotta do is just private message us uh, over on any of our social medias. Or if you know any of our personal accounts, you can do that too. And we'll send you a link and you can join the book club, even if you don't want to talk to us any other way. Um, so here, uh, so uh, Blade Disgusting released a list of the 10 best horror reads from last year, from 2021. So if you guys are looking for any suggestions, here is a really quick list i'll go down uh one of these i know you guys actually did um over on the book club uh the final girls support group uh also nothing but blackened teeth by cassandra caw goddess of filth by v castro warped and faded weird wednesday and the birth of the american genre film archive by lars nielsen Chasing the Boogeyman by Richard Chismar, which we which was the last book our book club did. 
Okay. So. Did you read that one? No, I, I'm even the one who no. picked it. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't read. I just don't have time to read. It's uh, school. Yeah. You know how it is. I hear you. Uh, the Autumnal by Daniel Cross, which I got to say the artwork on this, on that book is really cool. Uh, Yours Cruelly, Elvira, Memoirs of the Mistress of the Dark by Cassandra Peterson. The Book of Accidents by Chuck Wendig. The Last House on Needless Street by Katronwa Ward. Sorry, I'm butchering most of these names. Uh, My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. And yeah, that is it. So possibly if you're looking for any suggestions, there you go. Some horror novels for you to read. And that's it for horror news. Awesome. All right, so let's get into the review. 2010's Frozen, directed by Adam Green. Three skiers stranded on a chairlift are forced to make life or death choices, which prove more perilous than staying put and freezing to death. Uh, So yeah, this one uh, basically follows um, three 20-somethings, I guess, college-age students. Uh, They uh, go to a New England ski resort. And basically what happens is they pay the chairlift guy to they it, it, the whole movie starts with them paying this chairlift guy uh, so they don't have to pay full price to get on there. Uh, the girl ends up swindling her way. They get on there. They go skiing all day and whatnot. Um, they want to go on one last run at the end of the night. Uh, the ski lift guy, chair guy is like, no way, I can't do it. I can't do it. They beg him. And finally, they let him, uh, they let the three, uh, he lets the three kids onto the chairlift for the very last run. Uh, And basically what happens is there's just miscommunication between all of the ski lift workers and whatnot. And they forget uh, these three that are on the chairlift and they get stuck there. They get stuck on this chairlift and it's on a Sunday. And the ski resort doesn't open till that following Friday. So uh, they're basically screwed. And they the whole movie just follows them trying to figure out how they are going to stay alive and get uh, down off of this chairlift that is suspended 50 feet in the air. Which, most interestingly, I discovered was done completely practical. This movie had no CGI, nothing. Like Adam Green completely, you know, did this off a chair, like a legit chairlift uh, at a ski resort in Utah. So I found that uh, super interesting. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, where the movie we leave off. And uh, yeah, so who wants to start us off and let us know what you thought about it? Todd, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, alrighty, Frozen. So I remember seeing this movie a few years ago. I watched it with Joe. I think it was like one of the times he visited me in Wichita. But let me tell you. So when I saw this movie a long time ago, I really loved it. Like, I just, I don't know. I felt like I was actually on the ski lift, which is why I keep saying I'm on the ski lift by myself tonight because I still feel like I'm there. Um, It's just so good. Like just the how the camera is like up in their faces the whole time. Like you really feel like you're the fourth person on there. Um, Watching it the second time, like I almost didn't want to watch it because I was thinking spoiler alert I was thinking all of them died and so I was like this is gonna like hurt my heart so bad like I don't want to watch it again because I just remember feeling so sad and there was like no way out of this situation that they were in thankfully I had a nice surprise at the end which was nice and made me cry but I don't know it's just so scary like you tend to think what would I do in this situation but it's like okay Sam bitch you say you're gonna jump but would you really because it's fucking 50 feet high like it's scary like would you really be able to do it but I think you know when you're in tough situations like that you you tend to do things that you didn't know you were capable of anyways my point is I love this movie so much I cried I yelled at the wolves I I just love it so much I don't know what else I can add about it it's good. <laughs> so I think I mentioned on the last episode that I reviewed it on my YouTube channel like five years ago, and I did not like it like at all. Mm-hmm. Um, I even buried the disc <laughs> in the snow, just like as part of my little bit there. <laughs> uh, thankfully, it still worked. So that, that was that was great. Um, so, But like I was telling Joe uh, before, 
my, my whole mindset about horror movies has changed a lot in the last five years, especially since joining this podcast. Like I've been watching a lot of different types of movies. I've been like expanding my horror uh, knowledge, my horror base. And I watch a lot of like crap on Tubi. So maybe this movie wouldn't be as bad with like the different mindset that I have. So I, that's how I came in watching it. And I will say I enjoyed it more than I did five years ago, but eh. <laughs> It still didn't super capture me. Um, my issue with the film is, and this is something I've noticed in a few films we've watched lately, uh, including Lake Placid last week. They start off the film and make you dislike these characters. Like they they don't they didn't do a good job of making me care for these three people by swindling the chairlift operator and just doing all this like weird dialogue about like. They, they were kind of dicks, all three of them. And so I'm thinking right at the beginning, why do I care about what happens to these three? Like, I really don't. And that's that's a big problem for me when I'm watching movies. If you're going to make me care about people uh, getting into a situation, I need to relate to them on some level and I need to at least like them or it just the movie won't work as well. And that was an issue with me. And then throughout the whole movie i kept thinking like god you guys are so stupid You're, they're doing all these really crazy mistakes you know especially like the stuff we were talking about before not covering up properly um leaving their skin exposed not utilizing the things that they had on them properly you know all that kind of stuff is just frustrating when you they could have just been in such better position by just being not idiot, you know, just being smart about it. So that was a whole thing. Uh, and then there's, you know, like the wolves. The wolves were cool, but they just kept using the wolves like over and over. Like I would have loved to have seen different elements come into play. And also I was thinking like, it, are wolves always there on this ski hill full of children and skiers all the time? Uh, do people not know about this? Like usually there'd be some kind of radar that says, hey, there's wolves in the area now i i know wolves have been to ski resorts and it's usually makes the news everything it's pretty rare but it does happen uh but it just seems odd that the wolves just happened to be there that one night when all this other stuff so i don't know it's just the movie was okay uh it was passable but i wasn't like super into it uh yeah i so i remember i watched this movie like I'm pretty sure the first year it came out because, uh, you know, I was a fan of Adam Green's and, uh, you know, after he did Hatch, I think this was, I'm pretty sure this was his follow up to Hatchet. I might be wrong about that, but uh, it was definitely like early on in his, uh, his career. So yeah, I was like pretty excited for this one. And, you know, I've watched it a couple of times since, but it's probably been a few years maybe since I'd watched it last. And, you know, I, I have like fond, like good memories of like most of it, but I did forget like how it ended. So I was like, you know, excited to watch this again to refresh on it. And, uh, you know, overall, yeah, I, I think this is like a really solid movie. I, I do really enjoy this one. I think you definitely have to like suspend disbelief because there is some stuff in here that, you know, maybe might not be like so realistic. Um, but I, I'm able to just kind of go with it for whatever reason here. Like, I just think um, I, I kind of uh, disagree with Steve because I feel like I could relate to the characters because I think when I was younger, I definitely tried to do stuff like that. Like, I definitely tried to swindle like my way in for like cheaper price. Like if I could like, you know, like, hey, like, you know, let me give you the money instead of like these other people, you know, and I'll tip you or whatever. Um, so like I thought that's just like something kids do, you know, and like the, you know, because they are like young kids. So like I was kind of okay with that. And I, I think like even if you didn't think they were, even if you did think they were douchebags in the beginning, I, I feel like they kind of write that chip. Like once they do finally get stuck up there, I think there is some like pretty solid like dramatic moments. Like overall, I think the the acting is really good in this actually for like a low budget affair. I think all three uh of the main actors like like give really solid uh performances uh throughout and like i can't you know um give credit enough to adam green for doing this practically because i think it really adds big time to this because if it was done on a set or whatever i don't know if it would have the same effect. like i just feel like it would look like more fake or you'd be able to like kind of point out like Oh, this like I don't know, just like the it just feels like really genuine, and I, so I think that that was like a really big um, plus for this one, and it's like crazy. Like I just like I don't even know how the hell they were able to pull this off, honestly, doing it practically. It's pretty amazing. Um, 
so yeah, like overall, yeah, re- like re- really enjoyed this one. Yeah, I, I didn't like that uh, not Sean, Sean Ashmore character. I forget what his, his name was. Uh, the, <laughs> the, the kid mid- from Air Bud. Yeah, the, the middle guy there. Uh, <laughs> I don't think he redeemed himself really at all throughout this whole thing. And I, honestly, I didn't care when he died. It was just like, yeah. <laughs> Although I was surprised there wasn't more blood coming out of his almost severed legs. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that was a whole other thing. And why he didn't like almost immediately die from blood loss is a whole other uh i guess their explanation is that he it froze somehow but i don't think that's accurate um so there's like a lot of suspension of disbelief you know kind of moments mm-hmm. in this movie uh i also don't believe that sean ashmore could actually american ninja warrior his way to uh from one lift to the other on that cable there's no way with gloves <laughs> like it just doesn't seem plausible to me that he could actually do that yeah so it's just it's like one of those things i guess uh and also like the lift almost falling there at the end and then it does fall at the end you know i just like i enjoyed the ride like i i didn't hate it uh i enjoyed going through the motions with the characters and seeing what crazy situation they were getting to next but it was just like one ugh, like i one eye roll after another and that's i guess my bigger issue with this film what would you have liked to seen differently, Steve? Like, what, uh, what could they have? What else? Because it's tough, right? Because like, it's basically a one location movie, right? So you have to like try to introduce things that, you know. And when you're stuck on a chairlift, it's like, okay, like, so yeah. I guess what what would you like like to have seen? I would like to seen different situations. Uh, not bring out the wolves like every single time. You know, like right. every single of them dealt with the wolves you know that's like i saw it the first time cool you know i don't want to see it rehashed and honestly the most compelling thing about the movie was that like conversation about her dog right it's you can have like these cool real world conversations and that i guess could have filled some of the uh, of the time as well uh and i would like maybe to see them there longer you know they seem to have given up really quickly uh for they were only there what like a a day ish <laughs> if you really look at it, like 24 hours maybe um i don't know i guess i wish it, it like been longer so there's more desperation on there yeah yeah i think the two biggest moments for me like that i really like which is odd because that has nothing to do with the actual survival part is her talking about her dog and her peeing i don't know what it was about that scene but i i got the emotional like factor that's that was her peeing was almost like her giving up and that was like a sad moment. And I like that. And I wish we had more moments like that. I, I thought she was wonderful. Like, like you said, the acting yeah. was actually pretty good, yeah. but her in particular, I really enjoy it. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree with you about the peeing scene too. Cause like I, it, the music too, I think they used in that too. Like you just felt like the desperation and just kind of like, it's like, Oh man, when you just having to just like pee yourself when you're up there, it's just, yeah, that one, that was a really like great scene. Very impactful. Um, the makeup to work here like they legit look like they're really froze like freezing up there too like so the mate yeah the makeup work was really great like the frostbite when she's like especially before she pulls it off she like itches at one point and like you see it like peeling up it's just like really nasty and i mean definitely probably the most memorable scene has got to be the the hand when the hand is stuck to that railing and she like rips it (laughs) that's so nasty but it's like yeah that was, that was really cool. Actually, that, that makes me think of an interesting phenomenon uh, that people don't know about um, hypothermia that I wish they'd maybe explored. And that could have been one of the deaths mm-hmm. is that when you start having hypothermia, your body uh, course corrects itself and starts like making you feel like you're really hot. And mm-hmm. they find that people with hypothermia are found naked in the middle mm-hmm. of like a winter storm because they think they're heating up so bad that their mind is tricking them. And I, mm-hmm. I wish I had seen a character, like maybe Sean Ashmore's character, uh, you know, start taking his clothes off. And she's mm-hmm. like, what the fuck are you doing? And she's like, I'm so hot. That's I'm so hot. Point. And, and yeah. really, and yeah. just have different outcomes, I guess, to each character. Sure. Yeah. No, that's, uh, yeah, that's a valid point. Yeah. Like, cause uh, yeah, I, I do get it. They, they did. He did keep going back to the same beats like a lot throughout the, a lot of the movie obviously he, the, the wolves was definitely like his crutch like he he loved using those wolves a lot um which yeah i thought was great like in the beginning but i was like yeah, i do kind of agree like i don't think we need to keep going back to the wolves every time like the the initial wolf attack was really 
cool. Like I remember Sam, ju- that first v- v- thing of the wolf, Sam like jumped. Cause like, oh it was God, like a really fast. Covering his face. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I jumped. <laughs> it was like a really effective um, reveal of the wolf. Um, even though you kind of knew it, like, cause just by Sean uh, Ashmore's reaction, like you knew something was down there with him. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a great little thing. Um, I will say the, what did take me out of it a little bit was the uh when he did break break his legs and when he was down there it did look pretty fake like like you could tell like he was like buried in the snow and those were like um really like fake looking broken legs but you know that's just a nitpick (laughs) yeah and i I just one also want to highlight and you talked about joe i think what makes this movie better way better than it is the fact that they shot shot it practically yeah Um, you know i i complain about it once in a while i did during krampus snow in movies sometimes it really looks fake and it bothers mm-hmm. me to my core because snow has a very specific texture and way it looks and way it feels and way it reacts to things and i was thinking so i didn't read the imdb you know before i uh, watched the movie so i'm like wow they really mm-hmm. nailed the snow in this one <laughs> um, yeah. you know, so i was like impressed but then i realized it was i guess real snow so yeah good job uh, mm-hmm. for that yeah and apparently um the first time this ever screened, someone fainted in the theater when his legs broke. <laughs> it is a pretty nasty yeah. scene, though, right? It is. Like, yeah, it is. Yeah. Well, I it when is he it? started jumping down and his leg, he just like had his legs straight out. I'm like, what is he doing? Joe's like, you can't control how you fall, and I'm like, you can control if you have your legs like fucking hyper extended, straight down. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just like, once you like make that decision, like it's you can't like shift your like right like i don't think you can like once you're going down that way well he made that decision really do, right? he should yeah he, right he jumped yeah. it's Stupid, not like he was yeah. pushed if he was pushed maybe right. he would have a hard time course correcting but he jumped he knew what he was doing that's just mm-hmm. he's an idiot <laughs> i cried right? when he was getting eaten by the wolves and he was like yelling at his friend he's like don't you let her look down i was like oh i'm sad yeah and then the next scene that like was really good too between the two of them when she was blaming yeah. him for his death, you know, and the, you could really feel the emotion there and like them starting to break down, which I thought was like a really good scene. Um, but do you think they could have did more with when Kane Hodder came up with his little snow tractor there? I mean, like Sam said, like Sam was saying the whole time, she's like, why aren't they throwing more shit? Like they waited until he was like backing up. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they, granted, you know, that's why I'm saying you have to kind of suspend disbelief here a little bit. You're going to run out like, of shit to throw too, because at some point right. if, if you miss and you don't have your boots anymore or whatever, then you're kind of screwing yourself too. Right. Well, I guess right. I just, I, I don't, I feel like, um, I don't expect a lot from strangers or other people. So I think I would have thrown my skis down while he was like driving up. Like I wouldn't have waited for him to start backing up. You know what I mean? I don't mm-hmm. know. Cause I would have been like, this is my one shot. Like I need to go now, not think that he's coming to save us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. All right. So uh, let's get into the ending. I suppose we can do that. Um. What did you think? What did you think of the end? So obviously, in the end, in the end, the girl survives. Sean Ashmore gets uh taken away by the well. F- well, Sean Ashmore gets down. He finally scales uh this the cable wire, finds the ladder, and the last time we see him, he's just casually kind of riding down the hill on a snowboard. Um. And then she eventually, what happens? The chair fa- kind of falls, right? It like finally the chair collapses. straight up falls. Yeah. It, it yeah. Like collapses. And then, mm-hmm. and she's able to get out with, even though it lands on her ankle. So her ankle's probably like broken, I assume, or really damaged at that point. But along the way, she finds the wolves once again <laughs> come into play. And uh, Sean Ashmore's just completely in quite a gruesome scene like in pieces pretty much uh completely destroyed by uh the wolves and uh yeah and she did you think she was done there do you think she should have gotten eaten by the wolves or do you like that she kind of the wolves don't really give a shit i said sam was like wouldn't the wolves have attacked her but i was like well they're like eating and they're probably full at that point so i could see why they would let her go but do you and she so she does finally get she gets away and she survives um 
do you like that ending or do you think maybe it would have been a better ending if none of them survived and she gets eaten by the wolves too i think it was bleak enough like I, i'm happy yeah. that she survived i thought she was gonna yeah. get hit by the van i, I really did I, I thought that like oh my god she's gonna get hit by the fucking van as she's getting rescued um but no I'm, I'm happy that she survives because like it was bleak enough i think we don't need to end it you know sad as well yeah i agree because originally i thought she died as well um but it just would have been way too sad and depressing i mean she already lost her boyfriend and the friend oh i don't care about that her puppy's gonna get to eat that well exactly and that's what i told joe i go (laughs) i was like she only survived because she knew that her puppy was way now home i said that's what would get me through my you know yeah that's exactly my 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 thought was my first thought was oh thank god the puppy's gonna make it (laughs) like i don't care about her really that much i cared about the puppy and it's gonna make it so i'm very happy about it i know mm-hmm. i told joe i was like think of how happy the puppy's gonna be seeing her walk through the door as i was crying <laughs> uh yeah no i agree with you guys I, I like how it ended and it's it ends on a very like emotional note where they play her um you know the guy in the car says something similar to what her boyfriend said to her um earlier on in the movie so I thought, yeah, I thought it was a pretty, you know, impactful way to end it. And yeah, overall enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah. two, All right. two, two things oh, for that I'm wondering, why did they put this in? Because it didn't really go anywhere. Uh, one, uh, Sean Ashmore getting that girl's number. Like they oh, make yeah. such a big point of it going up the lift. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, you remember these numbers. You remember these numbers. I thought that would have to play somehow into something. Nope that just they just abandoned that completely by the time they get up on the lift you know they talk about it briefly but at one point he's like do you remember your number she's like nope and that the last week or <laughs> that and then i also thought the cigarettes would come into play because mm. it didn't make sense to me really why she was smoking um you know i guess maybe only to lose her glove but i don't know i thought mm-hmm. they'd do something yeah. with the lighter or something with the cigarettes <laughs> like, I just I don't know that, that's two mm-hmm. things I feel they put in for really no good reason was it just this glove she dropped because yep. she had the yeah. lighter the whole time right uh, I don't think she dropped the lighter I think it was just a glove yeah no. but she had so we can we assume that she had the lighter in her pocket I think so the whole yeah time. Wow. yeah and then yeah like anything. you said yeah I, I think the, like you said the cigarettes i think was just a plot device for her to lose the glove um which i was fine with and then the number thing i you know i i was fine with it to me it was just kind of like character building i suppose just kind of like something for like like him to have hope i suppose while he's up there like sort of like i don't know just something to kind of hold on to like Cause that's what you do, right? Like when you're like in a situation like that, you cling to any sort of sense of hope. And he was like, I'm going to get down. I'm going to call that girl. I'm going to marry her like type thing. So yeah, yeah I was fine with it. And, and they mentioned like five times that he's single. <laughs> like, yeah. They, they keep <laughs> mentioning it. Like, by the way, why are you single again? <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's rate her. Sammy. It's tough. I mean, it really, I think it should have a higher rating on, uh, um, it's, what's the website, Joe, that I always get confused? IMDb? Yeah. It only has 6.1 out of 10. Come on. That's kind of um, high for a horror movie, though. Yeah, especially for this type of movie, too, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so I just, I just really like it. I feel like it kept me entertained for how limited the spots were and, like, the opportunity of, like, scary things to happen um so i'm gonna give this one a 7.5 i'm gonna go like a 5.75 um not mad i watched it again for sure i I was entertained throughout the whole thing maybe sometimes for the wrong reason but uh i did i didn't like hate it you know i still enjoyed uh, going for the ride so 5.75 close to a six but not quite a six so Mm -hmm. 5.75 is where what i'll give it yeah, I mean, to me, this this one still held up to me. I still really enjoyed watching it uh, this time around. Um, to me, I think this is probably Adam Green's best movie he's done. It's between this and Digging Up the Marrow for me. Um, those are my two favorites from him. Yeah, I just think uh, it just it just works for whatever. Like I said, it, it, there, there's definitely some issues here, but for me overall, for this type for a type of movie like this, I think it, it works pretty well. So I'm right there with Sam. I give it a seven uh, seven and a half. Awesome. 
Uh, and thank you to everyone who voted it in, because this was uh, voted in by our listeners during our winter pick. So a lot of people are excited of us re- reviewing this one. Uh, yeah. They, they all hate me now, probably, but <laughs> <laughs> hopefully I'll redeem myself at some other point. Uh, you know, it's just, I don't know, this type of movie, like there aren't a lot of good ones. I felt the same way about mm. Buried. You know, when you're stuck in a yeah. certain spot for so long, eventually you're like, okay. <laughs> get this over with yeah know? i mean it was like an hour and a half which any longer yeah i might <laughs> this might have gotten i think one it honestly probably could have been even maybe 10 minutes shorter and i would have been fine with it but yeah it wasn't too bad it wasn't like overly long so that's okay. right mm-hmm. all right so next week we're uh are we doing it scream one two three and four one uh, through that's the plan four. Yeah, so Scream retrospective, which is kind of my fault because I can't see Scream 5. Uh, theaters are closed here. I'm hoping somehow we get a miracle and they announce they'll reopen. Chances of that are pretty much zero <laughs> given mm-hmm. the state of things right now. But uh, you know, there's always hope. Uh, yeah, so that's why we're not doing Scream 5 right away. We will do it as soon as I can see it, I guess. Are you guys going this weekend? I think we are, yeah. I think that's the plan. Mm-hmm. But yeah. we'll keep our... I'm we'll keep our to thoughts go. until the we'll keep our thoughts until the uh to the review why are you scared to go because what if there's loud people and they run it for me i'm gonna be so angry well we're definitely would don't want to go on like opening night or i'd say i think the best way to go see like that would be like a matinee mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially yeah. maybe like saturday 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 afternoon maybe or something but then yeah scream one to one to four that'll be an interesting uh I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it because I haven't seen three or four in quite a long time. So I'm excited to revisit both of those. Mm-hmm. And I don't think mm-hmm. I really care for four. So Joe says I've that, only that seen one's four like once. the most loved one. Well, I, it's not the most loved one, but it's people have like really, I feel like it's gotten like a, a res- come around some sort it. of like, yeah, people have like come around to it and people are like, this, this one's actually really good. All right. I'm like, okay, like, I guess I'm going to have to watch it and see if my opinion has changed. Mm-hmm. I'll see about that. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I, I do think I liked it four better than three though. So we'll see if that holds true again. I just remember really disliking um, the female cop character in part four. I can't remember her name. She's kind of a famous actress too. The blonde lady there. I can't remember. Yeah, she was in Sugar and Spice, Sam. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't remember her name. Yeah. I, I watched the four like a year and a half ago when I appeared on uh, the Don't Be Crazy podcast. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm still excited to revisit them. Um, my least favorite then was part three. Um, I don't know. I just didn't like the whole making a movie about the situation mm-hmm. angle of it. But, you know, I'm, I'm still excited to revisit them all. I mean, it's, a, it's one of those movies that I can watch definitely every few years and be happy mm-hmm. about it. So, mm. yeah. yeah. All right. That's going to wrap it up for this week's episode. Thanks for joining us. Todd, we miss you again. And uh, be sure you guys are following us on Instagram. Check out our Discord. It's always a good time over there. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll catch you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.